Hi, this is Nadine from Save a Million Cents, and today we are going to talk about financial anxiety. Um, so this series is basically people that are members of the Save a Million Cents Instagram account audience members that send me DMs or emails requesting um, that I answer money related topics so it's either things to do with how they budget or things to do with how they feel and behave around money so today um, i'm going to address this question that i keep getting in different forms the premise of the question is now that i am better financially i'm still scared so whether it's because you you received a raise or because your business is doing good or that you decided to become, you know, to get on top of your finances and you've got, you know, your debt is paid off and you've got your emergency fund all lined up, but you're still feeling scared. So these are all symptoms of financial anxiety. So other symptoms of financial anxiety is um, like being constantly scared of making the wrong decisions or the wrong choices due to their financial implications, um, not trusting your decisions, not trusting yourself, asking for outside input, and then freezing and not making a decision at all, which keeps you stagnant. Another symptom of financial anxiety would be um, you becoming a little bit passive, kind of like burying your head in the sand, non-confrontational with regards to your personal finance or even business finance. So that is another symptom of financial anxiety. So um, and the, the, the other one is what I first talked about is feeling scared when it comes to money, even though you are in a better financial situation now. So. This video is about more of the mindset perspective or point of view to this issue. The other day, I posted a video um, talking about the practical side of this. Now, this is about the mindset. Okay. So, the first thing I would want you to do if you are in the situation is to get curious. Okay. So, Getting curious does not mean getting critical or judgmental about your situation. It doesn't mean like, oh my God, I have like this financial anxiety, even though I'm on six figures, um, there's something wrong with me. Getting curious means taking a step back and looking at it objectively. This is why working with someone is helpful because they help you kind of take a step back and look at yourself in a different way rather than you being in it. Anyway, so ask yourself so okay so before when I didn't have a savings or when I was on 50k and now I'm 100 I used to spend money willy-nilly um, and I seem to be happier but right now I'm terrified so hmm, curiosity would be like how why, what do I think this is because of and I would ask you to maybe journal on this or whatever your own way of processing looks like. So you could journal on it. You could just ask yourself that question and go do your thing, go do your life and be open to the answers that might pop in your head. Because funny enough, all the wisdom we need is actually inside of us. We just <laughs> need to learn how to access it. OK, so ask yourself, I wonder what that what it, what that is. I wonder why. I'm actually terrified now all the time. Hmm. Then the next step would be asking yourself, what do you think the deeper purpose of this feeling or behavior is? So let's say the behavior is that you're frozen, you're not making decisions, or you're frozen and you're not looking at your finances, or you're feeling scared or you're feeling anxious. So what is this behavior or feeling trying to help you achieve, accomplish, or protect you from. So everything that your body does, everything, every feeling, every behavior has another purpose. It has a purpose of protection. It has a purpose of achieving something. So when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling scared, when you're feeling frozen when it comes to money, what do you think this behavior is trying to protect you from or trying to help you understand? So, for example, in this case, upon reflection, you might realize that, hmm, okay, so I used to have debt and now I have savings instead. So it's been really nice to get rid of that debt. And it's been really nice to finally start caring, taking care of my finances. 
it feels better and more secure. So it makes you feel happy and prideful and joyful. And then when you think about spending your savings or when you think about losing that raise, you are filled with this feeling of anxiety and dread and heaviness. So what is your mind or what's your, your feelings? What are they trying to protect you from? Is actually they're trying to protect you from falling back into the position you were in before your financial savviness or before the, the, the raise or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So you were, you're good now, you were really scared before, and now you're even more scared because your brain is like, we don't want to go back there. Please don't, let, don't go back there. So this means that now you are protecting yourselves from spending money because somewhere in your mind, you feel like spending money is actually a threat. It does not feel safe to spend money anymore because you're scared of falling back into where you were. Okay, so this tells me that this anxiety tells me a story. It tells me that you are managing your finances from a place of lack of trust in yourself. Okay, so basically, it's telling me that there is a part of you that is scared, a part of you that's anxious, and that sees spending as a threat, and it doesn't trust that you're going to be okay, or you're going to be safe after you dip into your savings, or you're going to be safe if that influx of money goes away, okay? And this is exactly what it looks like when your financial decisions are driven by fear and anxiety. It looks like a, a kid driving a car, like holding the steering wheel and not even <laughs> able to see through like uh, the windshield. They're like, oh my God. So this is what it looks like to me when I see that somebody is actually really scared of making financial decisions or is financially anxious. It's just like the kid, the kid part of you is actually driving, is behind the wheel. Okay, so you are actually acting from a place of fear and reaction rather than a place of growth, a place of trust, and a, a place of strategy. So this is where you were, where we're at. But remember, we're looking at all of this with curiosity and objectiveness and not with self-criticism. So I'm not saying any of this to criticize you. I'm not saying any of this to make you feel bad about yourself. I'm just telling you, this is probably where you're at. I'm not your coach. I'm just talking to you in general here. <laughs> but this is, I would imagine this is where you're at. And I would also say that this is due to something that happened in your childhood that kind of created this anxiety domino effect but again I don't know what your childhood looked like so I'm just generalizing here so excuse me if this does not resonate with you at this point however if it does resonate with you listen so when we are in the situation when we're acting out of fear it's because we don't have that self-trust yet yet yes you were here and you brought yourself up to a better situation but subconsciously, you don't trust that you're going to stay in this good situation. You're very scared to go back to that situation. Therefore, spending is a threat. Therefore, anything that happens that's out of your control is a threat. So speak to yourself this way. Coach yourself this way. So you say, so I managed to get myself out of debt. I managed to get myself to find a raise or find a good job or like build my business. I um, have a budget that nourishes me. It's not restrictive. I have a nice rainy day fund. This means that I have grown. I have taken myself from A to B. I am now at B. I have done a lot of growth, soul searching, healing, and whatever it actually took you to get to the situation because no one gets to this financial situation like this. There is a fair bit of reflection a fair bit of growth that happens and discipline of course so what I would say is perhaps in your own way whether it's through journaling through visualization through meditation perhaps you can somehow tell that little girl or boy or whatever you identify with inside of you to that is still living in that fear mode that's still you know not trusting just tell them that I understand that you're trying to protect me and I understand that we are in a much better situation now. 
but I am now financially savvy. I know my stuff now and I will never, ever take us back to where we were. And if we do go back for some reason to where we were, it's okay. I can take us back to a better situation. Trust me. Okay. So for example, if you had a little girl and she's scared, what would you tell her? And this is the basis of financial reparenting. So this is something I do a lot with clients, but you know, you can do it yourself in this way. So what would you tell a little girl or a little boy that's standing in front of you that's scared? What would you, how would you talk to them? Okay. You can tell them, you know, I know I made a mess before. I know you're trying to protect me. I know, but I learned a lot. I grew up and trust me, I know what we're doing. And I know that I'm very aware of my values. I'm very aware of my goals right now. And things will never be like they used to be. Okay. And this is the beginning of how we actually do the deep money healing work. Okay. So it just, this is just a snippet or like a, a quick way of, of dealing with your deeper financial wounds because slapping a budget on things or shaking yourself into discipline and saying, right, I'm overspending, no more spending, blah, let's do this. This can work for a week to a month, maybe even six months, but you're going to fall back into your old habits if you don't address the real wounds and the real cause of this behavior. All our behaviors are ingrained in our subconscious and we need to see why these behaviors were created and 99% they were created to protect you from something. So using this method that I taught you in this little video for most of your financial wounds can actually be very beneficial. It might not go as deep as you would if you were to be working with a money coach. However, it will help you start asking yourself the right questions because the quality of your healing journey is very highly determined on the quality of the questions that you ask yourself. So if I want to heal from money wounds and I ask myself, why am I doing that? Why am I so stupid? Why do I keep doing this? These are not very good quality questions and your brain is not going to give you good quality answers and your healing journey is just going to be a disaster. So go back to this video, save it, write down the questions and elaborate on these questions for this situation if that applies to you or elaborate on, this, on these questions for other financial situations that you might, that might arise. And this is how you can probably start self-coaching. Um, if you are interested in working further on, on your money wounds in a more uh, for, formal capacity, just DM me. Um, I'm always open to talking to you and seeing if I can be of service, if I can be of help. So my DM is open, my email is open. I hope that this has been beneficial for you. Um, just let me know if you have any questions. Thanks and see you later. <laughs>